happened in qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix? What happened in qualifying then? Q1. Well, the big thing that we need to talk about, Sergio Perez. Binning it rather largely. It wasn't even like a small bin. This was like a medium this to large was, size bin. Yeah. There was a lot of speed going into turn one. Misjudged it. There was a car right in front of him, wasn't it, that potentially distracted him. It was coming a out of the pit amount. lane. But there was also another one that was, I think, in front of him that pulled out of the way as well just before he was going into turn one. So, yeah, a slight bit of distraction, but at the same time, to crash in Q1 and to be starting last, it's just curtains, isn't it, for not only his Monaco GP chances, but the championship, no? Yeah, it's the worst place you could crash and start last, really. Uh, well, it definitely is, because it's really hard to overtake. So, let's see. How, how much you can get through the field. Other things to mention in Q1, obviously it was Sergeant Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Joe. Joe was like P1 at one point yeah. in Q1 and ended up finishing 19th. Um, the Hasses, what? What are Hass like, doing? They've got a solid lineup these days. You know, Magnussen and Hulkenberg, you thought, oh, solid midfield drivers. They are bringing up the rear. Yeah, they've gone back to where they were, pretty much the worst team, really. Not good. No, not, not good, good at all. Uh, and the, the one final thing on Q1 is Hamilton. Oh, my word. Leaving he made it to the last minute. Hard work of that. Yeah, not just that. Q2 as well. And, mm. and yeah, I can't even believe that he's ended up out qualifying <laughs> Russell after after all of that. Now we go to Q2. And we have Piastri, De Vries, Albon, Stroll, which we have actually in brackets for Stroll, washed, and then Bottas. So I think the big thing was the fact Stroll got knocked out. Now. I think we should probably say we don't know the absolute ins and outs of everyone and their problems that they've had. <coughs> I need to cough. And we can't mute. Sorry. As I was saying before Tommy rudely coughed all over my point, was that, uh, that Stroll, we don't know necessarily if he had problems because we're at the track. and So I, we apologise if he did have something crazy happen or the team screwed him up. But as far as we are concerned, pretty washed at Monaco. Yeah, he didn't didn't have a good lap from the from the look of it. It was incredibly close. It was just changing all the time. I, I don't really remember, like, Monaco has had obviously really good qualifyings, but I don't remember the track evolution like that at Monaco. It was like something like Miami or something where it's just so much. Like, it was literally like last person across the line. Well, it was last person across the line that ended up getting the best time, but the track evolution was insane. It genuinely felt like a wet to dry qualifying yeah. session. It was unbelievable to watch. But yes, then there was, of course, Piastri getting knocked out, very close to making it through. Um, Lando made it through, but had that crash, which Claren being able to, to repair that car in about 10 minutes, I think it was. Yeah, fair play. To get the car out. That was that was unbelievable. Um, but it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Let's move to Q3 now. And, well, we had a session on our hands. We had Ocon going P1, we had Leclerc then going P1, and then we had Alonso going P1, and then we had Verstappen going P1. And even for you, as a Verstappen fanboy, you were... I mean, let's roll in the clip, shall we? Of, okay. of what went down. <laughs> He's quick here, though. He's quick here. Max is quick here, so he might do it. No, no, no. It's going to be close. No. It's going to be really close. No, no. Oh, you Give the ball. So I lo actually love, I've watched back the highlights and Esteban Ocon getting pole and then you hear on the F1 YouTube channel, Alex Jakes just genuinely sounding like his, his soul sort of left his body of how surprised he was. It was Ocon like me fastest. with Hulkenberg. Yeah. 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 <gasps> Hulkenberg's fourth! <laughs> it it genu was like that. Yeah, it genuinely was. Unbelievable. Out of nowhere. What a lap. Uh, he was actually, he did the best, uh, the, sorry, the second best final sector. Um, unbelievable lap from Ocon. Um, yeah. Biggest surprise so far. He starts third as well. Uh, starts because third because Charles Leclerc has a penalty, which we should mention, because he blocked Lando in the tunnel, which was horrendous. Like... Slam dunk. Oh, the, I don't know why it took so long. We actually saw Charles going to the stewards, didn't we, when we were walking out of the, out yeah. of the track. So it was... 
I, I just saw the clip. I went, how? I mean, I, I want to say, why are they? Why is he doodling in the tunnel so much? That it was quite. Yeah. It was quite slow, and apparently they have been told not to do that according to Lando. But then also Ferrari on the comms, like, come on, let's let's speed this up. Let's let's keep the comms going. It's literally Monaco, and it's not even Q1. It's Q it's Q. Three. It was Q3, so the least amount of cars you can possibly get, and they still screwed it up. But yeah, Charles did go fastest for a brief moment. I gave it a good old whoop in the middle of the Red Bull Energy Station. And to be fair, there was a few other people that cheered as well when Charles Leclerc went on pole, provisionally. Um, but then there was a bigger cheer from myself as well, actually, when Alonso, purple in the first, purple in the second, and then a washed final sector, but still took pole. And we believed, did we not? Yeah, Alonso's lap was incredible. Um, he said that, I mean, he would do, but he said he gave it absolutely everything and was on the absolute limit, couldn't do any more. And I do believe him. I mean, his teammate's 14th uh, and Alonso is literally on the front row at Monaco. It was so close to happening. And uh, yes, uh, I would have loved to have seen it, even as the, the Max fan. Look, yeah. Alonso, not the greatest last sector, but an unbelievable. Like when you look at that final sector, Verstappen put it on, the, just he just threw it all out there, didn't he? The yeah. Millimeters away. I don't think I've ever seen a car that close to the wall without crashing. It yeah. can't, I, I, you literally cannot do anything more. Well done, Max. Well done for bold position. Question from Mega versus Primus. Does this qualifying session justify Monaco's position on the calendar? Yes. <laughs> yes, next question, I suppose, yeah. Um, the race will be terrible tomorrow. We'll have a very different podcast where we're discussing, God, Monaco's a bit washed, isn't it? What can, we change, what can we change? But you will never get a qualifying like that anywhere else. And it's just a unique circuit that the best day is the Saturday. Mm. It's one race for 23. I don't, it is it worth it. It was enough entertainment to be like, that was worth it. Tell me, was that not better than every Grand Prix we've seen this year? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. And don't don't get me wrong, I'm one of the people that don't... I love racing, I love wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles, but in pure excitement terms, that is the best set, that is better than any race we've seen this year. Yeah, it was. it, it yeah. came down to the, to the wire, absolutely. Uh, question from underscore Game Changer 08. Does Alonso stand a chance to win or no way for Stappen losing this now from pole position? Obviously, the best opportunity is down towards turn one. He needs to get a good launch. He even said in the post-race interview, he said, um, well, you know, we get quite good starts. Verstappen's been a little bit inconsistent this year. And I'm like, oh, this guy's trying to just drop a little bit of this and that. I don't, don't actually... Collide. I mean, uh, Ocon win? I mean, it'd be cool. But, but also, the Alonso and... Uh, the Alonso Verstappen bromance is like my heaven. So. I would take that for another rock on win, to be honest <laughs> yeah. with you. That would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I think that that's probably the only chance, really. Although, although to be fair, it doesn't, I, I don't know, because the, the one lap pace is very close, but you'd have to say over a, over a course of a race distance, Verstappen's probably just going to have it It depends if Verstappen can check out or if he's cautious and just kind of goes, In well, I don't, window, I don't need yeah. to, and then just maybe pull like a three-second gap and then just, you know, give him that. Uh, opportunity that when the others pit, he can he can pit. It's a race one in the pit stops. We're not expecting any kind of moves at all, really. It is just very much a strategy game. Um, but yeah, let's see. Maybe Verstappen gets a bit of wheel spin, Alonso leads the race, and then we'll get an absolute banger. That's what I would love to see. Yes, please. Tommy, final thoughts, please. Final thoughts are, we've not even mentioned, and actually I'm quite disappointed that Yuki Tsunoda was P9, but he was... Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. There was a lot of um, amazing performances from a lot of drivers, and I think it just shows that Monaco, you can you can do something special, and fair play to, you know, Sonoda was ridiculous. Ocon, I think. Verstappen, that lap will go down in history. Alonso, incredible, but I think Ocon, for me, was probably the star of the show. Yeah, I mean, I can't Alpine believe great. he almost Alpine, got pole. <laughs> I know, it's unbelievable. And just the way in which that whole session evolved was was amazing to see. And it rewards bravery, this yeah. circuit. It literally does. So we'll see. I'm not sure about the weather. The weather, I think, has kind of cleared up. Um, but yeah, we will see. We'll have to. I, I, I don't mind. Even us, you know, we'll get drenched for the content, for the views, for the, for the racing action. You know what I mean? Yeah, but 
Oh no, no, I'm not gonna say. No, this sounds like the bit. first wor most first world problem ever. Okay, here we go. But can it rain after we've got the uh, the boat? Because choppy waters would be a bit sketchy in the in the rain. I'm, I was a bit nervous. We need that. to have a word with Tom Bellingham. Uh, <laughs> he's really. He's just... Unbelievable. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for watching this amazingly strange hotel room, which to be fair, we were recording our first take as the uh, food arrived. So the man saw a tripod with a camera pointing towards a sofa. I'm sure he thought of many things, eh, Tommy? I'm sure he did. We'll see you tomorrow for some more content, unless we're partying. Might Don't be. Don't know about that. Funniest Tweets will be out latest Tuesday. I was going to say Monday, <laughs> Monday maybe, maybe Tuesday. Yeah. But we love you all the same, and we'll see you very soon for another podcast slash video. Bye. And follow us on Instagram, Matty P1, Tommy P1, if you want to see more from tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.